Hello and welcome to Webcon BPS Tutorial Part 3. In the previous two videos, we created the first two cornerstones of our gift approval process. The form, which is used for entering values into the database, and the workflow, which defines the business logic behind when and to whom each workflow instance is assigned. The final piece of the puzzle will be our site, which will serve as a user dashboard, which will allow all the actors of our process so the end users, the managers, and the compliance officers to have easy access to all workflow instances which are relevant to them. And it will also give the process creators, so you and me, an overview of all the workflow instances registered for this process, regardless of who they are assigned to and which step they are currently residing in. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Generating a process site is very easy and can be done directly from Designer Studio. Right click on your process and click Generate Process Site. Essentially, all you need to do here is enter a site name and hit Generate Site. But first, let's talk about all the elements that will be generated and what each of them does. So the first block up at the top are the four default web parts that will be placed on the main page. So starting at the top, there will be a table containing all active workflow instances. So essentially workflow instances that are not currently residing in end steps. A counter for showing the number of active workflow instances a button for launching new workflow instances, and a widget for searching. The next block here is a series of tables. Each of these tables corresponds to a workflow step and will contain a list of all workflow instances currently residing in that step. And also for each table, there is a separate page. Next up, we have a separate page which has a table and this one compiles all workflow instances in the system that were registered for this process. Such a page and such a table would be useful for the administrator and for testing purposes. And lastly, there is one more page and table with all the workflow instances, but this time they are grouped together by workflow and by step. So for the purpose of our scenario, the only pages I'm going to leave behind are the main page and the page which will compile all the workflow instances of the process. And I'm just going to disable all the other ones. Once you're ready, you can hit generate site. And this will take a moment. Once your site finishes generating, you can go directly to it by clicking Open Site. Alright, so on the right hand side, you can see the Task Counter web part and the Search web part. And in the center, there is the button for starting new workflows. Just launches a new workflow instance. And also our first Show Workflow Elements web part. And as the name implies, My Active Tasks, it will display all workflow instances that are assigned to me and that are currently active, so they are not in end steps. The second table that we automatically generated can be found on the All Elements page. The default configuration for this Show Workflow Elements web part makes it display all workflow instances regardless of who they are assigned to and which step they are currently residing in. So it also displays workflow instances that are in end steps. Now let's try and configure the Show Workflow Elements web part. If you go to Edit Page, and then from the drop down in the top right corner, select Edit Web Part, and Configuration. In this video, we'll talk about the first two filters and then data selection. So the Process Selection tab is pretty self-explanatory. You select first the process, then the form type, workflow, and if you want the steps from which you want to display workflow instances. In predefined filters, in the assignment filter, you select the status of the workflow instance in relation to the currently logged in user. So my active tasks would only be the workflow instances assigned to the person who is currently logged in. All means assigned to anyone and in all steps of the workflow and all active means assigned to anyone but it excludes the workflow instances that are currently in end steps and the rest are pretty self-explanatory and the row filter predefined filters are also mostly self-explanatory here you can filter by modification and creation date or you can put a hard cap on the number of rows all right let's go over to data selection here you select which columns you want there to be on your Show Workflow Elements web part. So here we have a number of default columns and the number column over here dictates in which order they are from left to right. 
So as an example, if we are designing a show workflow elements web part that will display the workflow instances in an archive step, in our scenario we have the positive and negative end steps, having something like a days in step column would be pretty redundant. Since those workflow instances are expected to stay there forever, we can just deselect it. And if you scroll down past the system columns, you will find your form fields. So these are the form fields that we created in the first video when we were creating the form and they too can be included on the show workflow elements web part. So for example having something like the title and total value easily visible would be quite important for us. Alright, let's quickly go over and see what this looks like. Click save and return. So as you can see here the title and total value are included as data about our workflow instance. So in summary, the information that is available about a workflow instance at first glance from this web part is the step icon, the instance ID, the step in which it is currently located, who it is assigned to, if it, there is a task to complete, and then there is the two columns for, with data from the instance itself, the title and the total value. Of course, the complexity and the arrangement of columns is completely up to you. In the meantime, I've created a bunch of workflow instances to have a larger data pool for the next part of this video. Currently, the instances are sorted by instance number with the newest ones being at the top, but I can change this by clicking any of the columns. So for example, if I click on the step column and click sort ascending, and they will be sorted by the step in which they're currently located. Or for example, I can choose to only display those in the approved step. This is of course temporary. Permanent sorting, grouping and filtering options are configured directly in the web part configuration. For more examples of show workflow elements web part configuration, I will link to a previous video. It's from an older version, but the basic concepts are still the same. Okay, now let's quickly go over the show workflow chart web part, where the show workflow elements web part displays the workflow instances in the form of a table. The show workflow charts web part will display them in the form of the chosen graph. Okay, so let's add one of them. And from webcon BPS, go to show workflow chart and add. And of course, configure it. Configuration is pretty straightforward. First of all, select the process. So in our case, it will be the gift approval. And now since we only have one form type and one workflow, then we can just select all of them since this is irrelevant. And for the steps, for this time, for this example, we want to include all the steps. We can go over to the predefined filters and we want to display all workflow instances. Then go over to the chart tab and let's do a very basic pie chart that will display all the workflow instances grouped by step, and let's call it statistics. All right, and also select go to workflow instances list at, at the very bottom here. I'll show you what this does in a moment. Click save and return. Okay, so what we have now is a pie chart and each of these sections of the pie represents how many workflow instances there are in that specific step. And this is why it's rather important to select all workflow instances in the predefined filter, because if we only kept it to active workflow instances, then it would only display the manager approval and compliance approval uh, steps, because since they are the intermediate steps and the rejected and approved steps are end steps and they wouldn't be included then. Okay, so now about that last option, what does the go to workflow element list do? So for example, if we go over to the approved section of the pie and click it, so what we have here is a miniature version of the show workflow elements web part, which displays the instances filtered down to whatever we selected on the pie chart on the step before. So if we go to another one, let's do manager approval, and we will have all the workflow instances that are currently residing in the manager approval step. A similar effect can be achieved if we go down to our list of all elements web part and filter it down to only the manager approval instances. And of course, the list from the charts web part can be configured just like a normal show workflow elements web part. So the data displayed and the order of the columns is completely up to you. So to summarize, what we have right now are two web parts that each display the entire pool of workflow instances for the given process, in this case, the gift approval process. 
One of them displays these workflow instances in the form of a giant table, compiling all of them, and the other in the form of a pie chart. And again, I'll provide you with some more examples of configuring a show workflow charts web part. There should be a link on the screen right now. So to recap, over the course of the three videos, in the BPS tutorial, we created a working form and workflow. And right now we have completed the three cornerstones of a successful business application by adding a user dashboard. So this page detailing all workflow instances would be something the administrators would be interested in. And for the normal users, we have the main page. And on this page, an end user can register a new workflow instance and the compliance officers and managers can see all the workflow instances that are currently assigned to them. Another idea for a web part that could be added to this page would be a show workflow elements web part that displays workflow instances that were created by the currently logged in user. This way, an end user visiting this page would be able to see the workflow instances they previously registered and track their progress. And this concludes the main block of tutorial videos which cover the three cornerstones of a business application. But this is not the end of BPS tutorial videos. In the future we plan to release a guide covering integration scenarios and another one which will talk about some more advanced business rules. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Webcon BPS, the ultimate business management platform.